My name is Renee Lacotte. I went from being a college dropout, living at his mom's house, to generating over $5 million in revenue, all because of social media. As you can see, I came all the way out here to Miami to meet with somebody that has been in my life for like five years. Five years, bro. Um, but I haven't talked to you in about three years. I met years. you when you were like fucking 20 years old. Like a tadpole. You couldn't get a drink yet. You couldn't do anything yet. I met you when you were 20, bro. Maybe when I was 20 and instantly took me to Miami. That was our first stop. Yeah. Let me introduce Rene Lacard. You might know him. Which uh, camera am I looking at? Either one, baby. We're yeah, here cool. in the flesh. Um, give, us, give a background. I want to... <laughs> You probably yeah, seen him on your Facebook or Facebook. That's crazy. You or, call me old Facebook. Or offer up. <laughs> you might have seen him on your Facebook. Dude, this guy is everywhere. Okay. Um, yeah, man. I'm, I've been doing social media stuff for a minute. Uh, I'm, I'm one of those. I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm one of those entrepreneurs that blew up off the internet. So I got rich off the internet. Um, I think this shit's always been like a tool, especially for young people, and I kind of caught. I got at the right time because I got on when like Instagram started to pop off and then mm -hmm. I understood like Instagram marketing, Facebook marketing. And so let's just start off right there. Yeah. Like you had regular jobs. You yeah. started where? Hollister from what I know? No, nah, it was Aeropostle. <laughs> Aeropostle. Worse, bro. It was worse than Hollister. <laughs> at least Hollister like kids were rocking that shit. Aeropostle, like no one was trying to rock that. So I started at Aeropostle fucking making, I was making $7.50 an hour folding clothes. Damn. Which is crazy. I don't know how, how I survived like that. And then, um, yeah, then I got a job at a Chinese restaurant washing dishes. Mm. That shit sucked. Um, and then I got, after that, I started teaching karate. I got a car sales job. And then eventually I just landed on marketing. I think people want to hustle. So for me, I was just trying to make money. I didn't care how I did it. Right. Obviously, legally, like I was trying to avoid like doing anything crazy, but... Uh, I was just like, yo, any way I can get the money, let me go do that. And that's kind of how I ended up, like, eventually finding social media. And being from West Covina, yeah. uh, is there anybody around that town that had that same mindset? or like? Nah, bro. The one thing you'll notice about small towns, I tell people all the time, like, getting out of your hometown is a cheat code. Because, and it's a cheat code because you want to get around people that have, like, the right mindset. So when you come from, like, a smaller town, not even a smaller town, but, like, a town where... People aren't necessarily ambitious. Shit isn't expensive. Um, people kind of have an idea that like, hey, I'm just gonna get a job, get it any way I can. I'm gonna get a job, I'm gonna start a family, I'm gonna get a house here. And that shit's just not the way. You don't get to experience life fully when you do that, you know? So for me, I always had like big dreams, big aspirations. Part of it just came from the fact that I would see people like making money all the time. One of the worst parts as a dude, especially, when, when you're broke and you see someone else making money, a lot of guys will misplace that anger and they'll get angry at these mm. people and they'll be haters. But for me, I was always like, man, how do I get there? How do I do that? Yeah. So I just have to find a way to do it. And I think I met you at a spot where you are you were like 25. 25, 26? 25, 26, yeah. And so fast forward five years, because I met you when I first landed in LA, which is 2019. Right. It's 2024 Damn. now. I'm halfway to 30. Five years. You're like one year away from 30. Yeah. <laughs> but bro, like you kind of really just... Took it to the next level, bro. I mean, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show them like where I the am. Crib, yeah. The crib, if we can take a tour. Of course. Um, but like when I met you, it was sort of that peak moment of COVID happened, right? Yeah. Was that the time where you really just doubled down on what you want? Did that I help mean, you? No. So here's my thing. I started making money on the internet around like 2018, 2019, mm -hmm. and. The thing about when, when it comes to the internet, shit happens fast. Like, it's accelerated the world. So back then, if you wanted to build a business, you would have to build that shit brick by brick, right? Now you get the whole fucking house right away like that. Because back in the day, like, okay, I'm going to build a business. Let me go see if I can market, get some customers. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can get a storefront. Let me save up my money for my job to get, like, a lease on a storefront, to buy some inventory, to do all this stuff, right? The second that the internet came out, bro, all that shit's out the window. Because right. now you're like, yo... I post one video on my TikTok or on my Instagram page. It goes viral. Now a, a million people know about my restaurant. You know who Keith Lee is, right? Yeah. You know the Keith Lee effect, how he'll just go to a restaurant, any random restaurant. The second he's like, yo, so, and he does it like monotone voice. So I tried this restaurant. Yeah, yeah here it is. <laughs> so I tried this restaurant. Yeah. And uh, literally, bro, like, so he'll be like, yo, so I tried this restaurant, whatever. Boom, instantly, overnight, it's a fucking huge success. So that's like how the internet works. So back in 2018, 2019, I think for me, 
I'm getting fired up now. <laughs> uh, 2018, 20, 2019, like I, I started with the internet stuff, and at first I wasn't making any money. Were you crazy? To be, were you crazy? Oh, yeah, for sure. I look like an idiot. Is that a thing? So I look like an idiot. So coming up, you're crazy, right? For sure. Like around you, the circle around you, everybody around you didn't believe internet money. Getting out of your home hometown is a cheat code because it puts you around people that believe in you. And when, when other people believe that it can be done, it can be done. Hmm. If you're around, like, I notice it too. When you're around, like, broke people, and I talk about it all the time, why is it that people that are broke, they hate on each other? I've seen it, like, on the internet. I get it on the internet. Anytime there's a rich person, they'll comment on my shit. It's always something encouraging. They're like, yo, bro, let's link, let's work, let's figure something out, right? There's broke people that are on there hating. They're like, oh, you're, you're fucking fake. You got lucky, blah, blah, blah. They like, it's always doubt, it's always hate. It's always trying to drag you down. So the thing is, when you, you're, you're around people like that, all they're doing is trying to bring you down because misery loves company. They love when other people are fucking down bad too. They don't want to be at the bottom by themselves. It's, it's lonely at, they say it's lonely at the top. It's lonely at the bottom too. So they're trying to bring people down. I'd rather be lonely at the top though. <laughs> exactly. If it's lonely both ways, why not be at the top? So. And that's the craziest part. So I think when, when it comes to getting out of your hometown, I think it just puts you in an environment where people believe in you and they have same dreams and aspirations. And if you have people that are also working mm -hmm. towards something, it just helps you because you're like, man, this is what's possible in life. And then when you start seeing people make it, you're like, this is what's possible in life. And going back to your question, like, I fucking hate this couch because I'm sinking in. Um, I thought I'd have longer legs. I, can't <laughs> like, I was going to flex my jade. It's a big ass couch. Um, no, nah, but. People are always gonna think you're crazy. They're always gonna hate on you because they don't see the vision in the same way that you do. Mm. Everything seems impossible until, until someone does it. But isn't it, in a sense, easier now? Because we have the whole world on our phone. That ass right here, bro. My shit's so, blowing up as we speak. And it's crazy how you talk about taking that like, first step to just do it. I think this is what me coming to Miami was. Yeah. I took an initiative. I invested into my flight, came here, and was like, yo, right. I'm starting this thing, and I want to shoot it. Now I'm kind of just paving my own little path that I want. Everyone's gonna call you whack or crazy or they're gonna judge you because they don't see your vision mm -hmm. and to them it seems far-fetched. But honestly, that's not on you, that's on them. That's a projection of themselves. Because mm -hmm. when people tell me like, oh, that's not possible, you can't do it. It's like, no, no, you can't do it. But don't tell me I can't do it because you can't. Which is crazy because you would think like, that's why LA was such a dream for me to go because you would think growing up there, everybody encouraged you to be somebody. I don't know about that, bro. And that's what that's my whole thought was, going there. I think that's a misconception for everybody that's outside of L.A. Because yeah. they see L.A., even my wife, right? Like, she she thought about L.A. and, like, you imagine it as, like, this, like, Hollywood, oh, L.A., yeah. like, fame, fortune. It's not like Tell that. Tell them about Hollywood Boulevard. I mean, right now, I mean, I haven't been to L.A. in, like, a couple of years. So I, I've been to L.A., but I haven't, like, been in L.A. for a couple of years. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's changed a lot. It's changed a lot. It's changed a lot. Speaking of that, though, like, is Miami the forever place? Are you? I don't know, bro. I go, I go where, where the vibes are. <laughs> How long have you been here? Like, I moved here, like, in, so when the pandemic started, funny enough, um, I got a spot out here. Mm -hmm. And I was going to get a spot out here anyway, just for tax purposes. Yeah. So I had I the L.A. crib. I had the Miami crib. And I was kind of going back and forth. Uh, you lived in the top, one of the top places in L.A., in downtown. Yeah. Now you're in Miami in one of the top places to be yeah. at. Which one do you like better? Which one? It's weird, bro. Because I can tell you off the bat, I like this place. Like, <laughs> I mean, this place is, all right, to be fair, this place is like fucking three times bigger. Yeah. This place is sick. But you were paying a great amount, too. LA, I was paying like, like eight grand a month. And then my old spot in Miami that you went to, that was like another seven. So like, let's talk about that, <laughs> the last penthouse. It was an it older was place. Old, it was an older place. Showerhead was broken, but it's like the dream still stayed alive. Yeah. And how did that how did that affect you when did you ever feel like, dang, I kinda gotta keep this vision going and everybody around me is I mean no bro, you gotta just be grateful. Like I the way I look at like all of this, right? It's mm -hmm. like I'm still in a fucking penthouse. Place was still like two stories, two thousand square feet. I got I wake up to a view of the water. So it's do, like Do people still think it's fake? What? Like Yeah, because well no, here's why people think it's fake. They they see my life, right? And they see me. And I don't look like a dude that's, like, when you think like a successful guy, you're not thinking like, oh, this guy has tattoos, he has long hair. They always think like, even people that know I'm successful, like, oh, are you an artist or something? I'm like, nah, I own a business. But I think it's because just the way I look. So then people will see how I look, and they'll be like, oh, this guy's not rich. But There's you no are way. an artist, though. What? 
Oh yeah, let's Spotify. Key. I got I got some <laughs> Spotify streams. No, but like they see they see that and they're like, oh, there's no way he's successful. Mm. So like, and the craziest part about the internet is new people find you every single day. So like, even if some people might be like, oh yeah, I know this guy. I've seen this guy for years. I've been mm. seeing him on my on my social media for like five years. I know he's successful. There's new people that discover you every single day. There's eight billion people on the planet, bro. So it's like, no matter what, like you're never gonna run out of like new people to see you. There's people on the planet that don't know who fucking LeBron James is yet. That's insane. Yeah. And he's global. And he's global. So it's like, you can always reach more, no matter how fucking big you are, no matter how famous you are, no matter how many followers you have, no matter, cause my videos have gotten, I think like a billion impressions. And then let's talk about that though. Cause let's switch it up. Let's talk about longevity. Okay. Cause it's, you've been pushing social media for how long? Shit, bro. 20, 2017, I kind of started. 2018 was when I got going. So, like, six years. Six years I've been going strong. Consistently. Consistently. Where you, if you look at nowadays, it's like one-hit wonders on TikTok or they're just TikTok influencers. How yeah. does somebody create multiple streams of just... Multiple streams of income, multiple income, businesses. businesses. Is it your personal brand that kept you alive this long? Is it just no. you being you? Like, what is it? It's it's because I built a real business. Mm. So here's the issue with a lot of like influencers, bro. They don't understand how like the actual business part of it works. They understand like, oh, let me post something, get views. Yeah. But they don't build an actual business behind that. They're like working for someone else. Like uh, the way an influencer would work, I'm, I own a business, right? I'm like, let me just pay this influencer five grand to post. But like they're just getting pimped out. They're like they're just selling their attention. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, for me, like I'm using all like my stuff that comes to me. I'm using my attention for my own businesses my own brands, my own like products, my own like stuff. So literally every time I post a video, like I could be posting for other brands and getting, I've done it, I've done the, like brand deals where they give me 2,500 bucks for a post. Mm -hmm. But then I sit back and I think about it and I'm like, fuck, like that video got like 600,000 views. If I would have pushed that to my own business, I would have made fucking like 20, 30, 40, 50 grand. And instead I push it to another business. Right. So like all these influencers that are like, yeah, I get paid to, to be an influencer. And like, this is not hating on anyone because my wife does that. No, <laughs> fuck that. Let's yeah. get on people no, right no, now. Yeah, so like, <laughs> but like, they're not building real businesses. So like, yeah. guess what? Like if you're posting shit, like you're not going to be hot forever. I knew that. Like I managed to keep it like trendy because I'm like, I'm kind of staying with the wave, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but you're not going to be hot forever. You see it with everybody. Nobody lasts forever. And like, especially on th in this game, like there's there's new hot people every single day. So for for you to stay like relevant, you gotta you gotta own your own shit. Cause now like even if I'm not relevant and I can't promote my own brands, like guess what? Now my brands got money. I can pay for all the new influencers. Mm, so now you're just able to leverage your own shit. Yeah. So now I'm no longer the no I'm no longer the fucking like guy. I don't have to be hot. Cause now there's a bunch of other people that are hot that aren't building their own brands. You see it too. Like if you look at all the the people that are gonna get really rich. They don't promote other shit. Like Mr. Beast, only thing he does is promote his own businesses. Hey, here's my chocolate bar. Hey, here's Beast, bro. here's my burger. Logan Paul, he don't do like brand deals. He does. Hey, here's Prime. His own deal. They're only promoting their own shit. So it's like when you own the business, you can have. When you build something real, when you own the business, you have longevity. As far as somebody new, right? Yeah. They st are they late to to the game? You can never be late to the game, bro. If the game just changes. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I, I know people that like blew up back in the, like not back in the day, but like back in my day, I guess, 2018, and they fell off hard. Why? Cause they refused to get on TikTok. They refused to like do the, so a good example, you know how like back in 20, 2009, music was different. Like you had Drake that was rapping, di completely different to Drake today. Mm -hmm. And then those rappers from 2009, a lot of them fell off. Cause they're not, they're still trying to rap like it's 2009. They're not like, hey, yo, it's 2024. Adapt. The game has changed. People are not listening to the same shit. In the same way, like the way people watch content has changed, right? Back in 2018, like it was about like cool pictures. Like I would post pictures on, on yachts and like traveling the world and doing flashy shit like that. And people would be like, oh, this is cool. But like in 2024, people are over that. And now people could just AI shit. That's what everybody, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what everybody's trying to do anyways. Like 2024, no one gives a fuck if you're like, you're not that guy no more if you do that. You got to be, like, actually entertaining. I saw something. It's funny. Because um, back in the day, like, 2020, when TikTok started, all you had to do to get views or followers was to be, like, a, a thought and, like, lip sync a song. It's true, bro. <laughs> Did you ever help on Musical.ly? What? No, <laughs> hell no. 
I'm glad I missed that one. I did. I'm not going to lie. Hey, sus. Whatever, bro. It's okay. Pride month. <laughs> hey, pride month, baby. <laughs> nah, so uh, back in 2020, if you're a girl and you start doing like a, like lip syncing to a song and like mm -hmm. you have your tits out, bro, million views. But it's so funny because now like the game has changed. People are so like, there's just so much of that. And like so many girls are doing it. They're like people, like I remember I, I seen my, on my For You page, there was like a girl trying to do it. This shit was so cringy because it had like 200 likes. Oh. I'm like, damn, <laughs> imagine doing all this to get like 200 likes. But that's just proof like the game has changed. Like that doesn't work in the same way it does. And you got to adapt to what's, mm -hmm. what's working. So back in the day, it was just pictures on Instagram, right? Yeah. Then it became like short, short form videos on TikTok. And now everything is short form. They got Instagram Reels, they got TikTok, they got this. And you got to keep people's attention. So like the way people watch content, that watch social media, that watch everything, the way they give their attention to it all changed. You know? Do you think we're, we're going to resort back to long form YouTube shit? I mean, nah, it, it, it just has to be more, not artistic, but unique. Because mm. every, what everyone's doing is played. Like back in the day, like this, like the way you like get people's attention, you know, the little subway surfer shit. Yeah. Whoever thought about that, that's so, <laughs> I know, so hold on, hold on, on TikTok at least. Like whoever thought of like just, yo, let me put the captions like, like fast like that to keep people's attention, that snapped. But then everyone started doing it. So it was like, okay, it's one of these. So now they put the little subway surfer right at the bottom or whatever. And people would watch the video because the subway surfer. Mm -hmm. But now people are kind of like every time, because I know for me personally, when I see that subway surfer shit, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck this. Right, let me scroll. <laughs> it's true, bro. Because like no one's trying to like see all that. But you don't mind having your, your shit clipped and having your subway surfer underneath it? Nah, whatever gets views. So then what's the, what's the next platform then that somebody should be on, right? That they can take advantage of? Because TikTok, I mean, is it still on and popping? Or do I mean, you... every, every platform's on and popping right now. Mm. Like every, every platform's on and popping. It's just mostly... The type, you have to like have a style that separates you from other people. Cause if other people, if everyone's just gonna do the same shit, like you're not gonna be unique no more. Yeah. Like even for me, like I used to do a lot of content. I kind of slowed down a little bit just cause I'm not trying to be like everybody else. Everyone is doing their own shit. And if you do that, you're just gonna get fucking left in the crowd. Like I think the reason, another reason I've been able to stay relevant for so long is because I've never done what everyone else is doing. Because if you're going to do the same shit as everyone else, you're going to get the same results as everybody else. So for me, I, I always got to have my own thing. And I'm working on some shit that's like fucking not that. Do you want to talk about that? Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of this, like this space, though, do you know anybody that like has hated on you in the game? Everybody. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> so with entrepreneurs, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, why, though? With entrepreneurs, there's a lot of ego. Hmm. We're not even entrepreneurs, like you see in everything. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're doing music, if you're doing uh, sports, if you're doing entrepreneurship, there's mm -hmm. ego in everything. Because no one wants to see other people doing better. Like they won't always want to see you doing good until it's better yeah. than them. So I think if you surround yourself with the right people, you're going to get it. But I've had people like all the time that don't even know me and they'll just say some shit, mm. right? And then they have no idea what I do. They have no idea who I am. We'll put you in the hot seat right now. Perfect. When COVID happened and everybody started making these courses, yeah. what do you have to say to those that like call you a scam artist for dropping the oh, whole got a course? Because you got a course. All right, so here's here's the this is what I tell people all the time, right? You gotta be, can I? I mean, I don't know if you're gonna cancel, but you gotta be extra retarded if you genuinely think. Because where do we film my course? God, I don't even know. Where do no, no, no. I shot the course? Yeah, where, where, no, but where do we film it? <laughs> Circa LA in your apartment. Exactly, and that apartment was like eight grand a month. What car did I drive when we filmed that course? I ate. I had a BMW I ate already. So I had, and, and we had office space where? Damn, uh, where was it? In Ooh, Hollywood. Hollywood. So I had this, this office in Hollywood. I have a fucking little big ass like fucking uh, apartment in LA. I got a fucking, not, I don't know if it's an exotic car, but I got a fucking expensive mm -hmm. car, $150,000 car. At what age? What? I was like 24, 25. 24, 25. So I have like, I'm fucking, my expenses, that, just that alone. I had my employees too. My expenses were like 40, 50 grand a month mm. to even get that done. So people would be like, yo, like you're scamming people. Like you're only selling, that's how you're making all your money from courses. I was like, I was rich before courses. Yeah. It's documented. You go on my Instagram. Look, I was making money already. I didn't have to fucking do it. I just did it. Cause I was like, man, like 
It's crazy that I'm posting on social media. I'm not getting anything out of this. But if you kind of think about it, you're giving game away. You might as well make money for what you know. Exactly, bro. Exactly. I, how I saw it. Exactly. There are definitely some people like that the scam. Fact, like you were, you were getting paid to fucking make my, help me make my course. I should have asked for royalties because. I know, yeah, but, you should have, bro. <laughs> God, I was literally nah. like the guy who, yeah. No, but, but so that's so people will always be like, yo, you're a scammer. I'm like, yo, there are scammers out there. Are. There's hella scammers out there. But do your fucking research. It's yeah. not hard, bro. Like, mm. there's fucking six years, seven years of videos on me, articles on me. I've been in the game for a long time. I built it from the ground up. But let me ask you. I got real businesses that I own that you can look up. Don't the smartest people get mentors anywhere, though? Yeah. So you you got to learn from somebody. It's not crazy to learn, you gotta from, learn from somebody. From, literally, you, everyone learns from somebody. Right? I, you, you, I look at Ky, you look at Kyrie, YouTube, but you're still learning from somebody because mm -hmm. somebody's making these videos. You look at Kyrie, he got mentored by, like, LeBron. He was, like, a big Kobe fan, so he got mentorship from both of them. You know, like, you look at any, any like, athlete, musician, et cetera, et cetera, they're getting mentored by somebody, somebody that understands the game, mm. right? Like, Drake was getting mentored by Jay-Z. So it doesn't matter what vertical you're in. You're gonna learn from somebody. You're gonna get mentorship from somebody. Whether it's YouTube, whether it's from someone like you buy a course from, whether it's from someone you work for, because I mentored you a little bit when you were kind of getting yeah. started in this. There's one thing I will take that I took away from this guy, um, and it was the personal brand thing. Fast yeah. forward, like I spent five years in LA, and I I don't regret anything I did. I don't regret. I don't have regrets. Right. But what I wanted to do, and what I'm trying to do now with this platform is finally build me. Yeah. I gave so much of my energy to so, so many people, yeah. original ideas, that like now I kind of just want to curate for myself. For sure, bro. And I don't know yeah. if that's bad. Like, nah, it's, it's good. I mean, like I said, if you look at every business that's booming, it's all on the back of a personal brand. Hmm. Think about it, like Fenty's a billion dollar company. You know why? Fucking Rihanna. No one's buying Fenty because they love fun Fenty products. They're buying it because fucking they want to be Rihanna. Scams too. Scams, yeah. Oh. No one's buying scams because they're fucking comfy. Like they might tell they themselves, <laughs> they, they, they might tell themselves, they might be like, oh, it's so comfy, bitch. It's because you saw Kim K wear it. So now all of a sudden you want to wear it. Kylie Cosmetics. I don't know one girl that's like, oh, I love Kylie Cosmetics. Yeah. Like, oh, the best makeup, Kylie Cosmetics. Mm -hmm. Bro, it's a billion dollar company because of Kylie Jenner. So like every single thing, like you look at anything, like The Rock, um, he has all of his like tequila brand. He has like he has all these brands too. The way you get rich is honestly through a personal brand, and then eventually you can build a business behind it. Um, there's another one, Honest, because I'm a new father, so we got the the, the diapers and shit. Mm -hmm. But Honest, that's like the baby company. Jessica Alba built it with her personal brand. So, like, you can build businesses that take on a mind of their own, but like you do it from your own self. Yeah. You know. Damn. Speaking of like. Being a dad, bro, how is that? <sighs> oh, man, I met you at such a time where you were... I was a wild menace. boy. You are literally I was a, a, menace. a menace to society. I was a menace to society. So this is a new you that I haven't gotten to see yet. Yeah, and, man. But it's a different energy that I more so can correlate with, if that you makes know? sense. I was just a wild boy. I was a rock star. That's what it was. I was feeling like a rock star. Should and now, everybody have that phase, though? <sighs> you get, it gets easy to get caught up in it. Mm. I'm happy I did it because now I feel like here's the worst the worst part for like dudes especially. Imagine you're a fucking dude that settles real young. You settle when you're 23 years old. And people can disagree with me, but you settle when you're 23 years old, right? Never get no bitches in your life. Never do nothing in your life. And you get married. You're married for 10 years. You're 30 years old now. You got a wife. You got kids. But you never did nothing with your life. Like it's mm. always gonna be like out there. Like you see some shit, it's gonna tempt you. Uh. You know, there's gonna be lots of temptation in your life. You're gonna be like. Damn, I wanna like, I wanna go out and do stuff. I wanna like, I lived a very full life already. So I'm 28 <laughs> years old. Like, me and my wife like we'll joke about it, but I'll see people like turning up on yachts and shit. I don't like, I don't wanna be out there. Mm -hmm. I'm fucking tired. Like, I'd, rather, I'd be home. I've been on like a hundred <laughs> boats in my life. I don't need to go on more boats. Yeah. You know. So like, that's what it is. I think if you're if you're young, get that shit out of your system. Cause the the reason people fuck up is because they don't get to do things. And now the second that there's opportunity to do things, you have a family now. Mm. Well, you can't, you can't just abandon your family. And now you're living <laughs> Some like- Some people do. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. <laughs> they abandon the family and they, live, like, they feel shitty about it, right? Or they, or they feel like, or, uh, or if they don't, they feel miserable because they're like, fuck, I wish I would have done this, but instead I wasted mm. my life getting a family. So it's like, for me, you met me at, I was a wild boy. I wish we could say stories. Bro. Yeah, we can't say any stories. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> but, you know. But it was uh, fun, bro. Like, I had a lot of fun. And then now, like, I don't care for any of that stuff. And, and I'll test that, too, because you were, I'm, I will give this, like, credit for, like, what you did, because you were the first person who showed me that it was kind of possible. Yeah. Uh, I arrived in L.A., and I met you literally, like, what, six months later? Yep. And I never traveled. So yep. Miami was my first stop. And uh, I think that's what kind of sparked that whole thing and it confirmed it for me that I'm not crazy. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. Ain't nobody did it better than me, too. <laughs> but yeah, bro, it's, it was like, it was good. So now that I have a daughter, Karma, I wanted a son, but oh. I got a daughter, you know? But listen, that's, that's part of the game. God has a plan for me. I'm very happy. I love, now that I know her, like, I love my daughter. Yeah, don't tell me you're one of those guys that like, oh, at the gender reveal, and then it comes out the wrong color, and you're like, no, I didn't. Do that. I mean, I might like I might have like just done it like unintentionally, <laughs> but like I was like I'm happy now yeah. that I have my daughter. Like I love that little girl. She's like my world. Um, Has things changed perspective wise? Like, do you feel overprotective? Is that I don't know about overprotective. I, I like because you're not showing her on, on social nah, like that. Nah, nah, is that nah. something you want to keep private? Yeah, because my my main thing is I have like people that like there's always evil evil eye is like a real thing yeah. and i don't give a fuck about myself because like people can look at me and have evil eye for me it's like no matter what you do bro you can't stop the train the train's <laughs> moving yeah but you got to jump on board and get the fuck out of the way otherwise you're gonna be just real sad Tough. like i think about it like this imagine the people that that back when i was start getting started right like people were like oh there's no way he's gonna do this you're crazy doubters then i got rich 2019 i made my first million dollars they look real fucking dumb so they're eating their world now Five years later, they're like, I, like they seen me, they're like, oh, like back in 2019, they were still down, like, oh, he made a million, but he got lucky, he's gonna fall off. Mm. Fucking five years later, <laughs> ten million dollars. <laughs> what the fuck is on my offer up, my Facebook? Ten, my yeah, <laughs> ten million dollars. Now it's like, now I'm all over the fucking place. Now I got a million followers. Oh god. Now I got a big ass penthouse. Now I got a happy family. Those people that were hitting back in 2017, they're fucking angry. They're mad. They, they were trying, they were praying on my downfall the entire time. What the fuck are they gonna do? They can't do shit. Does anybody ever reach out? Love it. I mean, all the time. I don't really talk to nobody though. No. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's like the best part. But with my daughter, it's different because it's almost like out of my control. Like for me, I know like how I'm gonna my bad, I hit the mic. I know how I'm gonna react to hate or people doing stuff. With her, I I'd rather keep her safe. I don't want I don't want, like, what is, Drake says, I wasn't hiding my kid from the world. I was hiding the world from my kid. That's how I feel. Ooh. Bar. That's a good line, That's bro. a bar, bro. But, like, I relate to that now, because I'm thinking about it. I'm like, damn. Real quick, fire. Drake versus Kendrick. I know, bro, this guy loves Drake. He I love fucking... Drake. I'm from L.A., though. I'm from L.A., though. I think, like, it's kind of, like, undeniable Kendrick smoked him. And he smoked him in the worst way, too, because he made, like, a bop. That's a bop. So. But he got hit hard. He got hit by Metro, he got hit by Future, he got, he's just been taking shots everywhere. I think it's one of those things, cause like- but I still bum Drake though. Yeah, I mean, everyone, like, it's not gonna fuck up his bag at all. Drake is still gonna be the most streamed artist. Yeah. It does, like, he's kinda like bulletproof in the sense that like, the work speaks for itself, but at the same time, he got hit by everybody. And I don't know, like, you don't know a celebrity, so I don't wanna make assumptions, but like, to me what it seems like is like, how we were saying, when you're on top, people hate on you. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what it feels like, but maybe Drake's just a shitty person. Like, you don't know. Mm. I don't want to say, because it could be both. It could be like, yo, they're just jealous, because, like, yeah. he's literally the guy, and, like, they're, they're tired of it. Or he just be treating people like shit, and they're like, nah, fuck this guy. So, uh, I don't know. But, I, like, with that whole thing, don't get me wrong, I, I love Drake, so it sucks to see him take an L, but at the same time, like, he kind of, he, he chose the wrong one. He chose the wrong one. Can you really him? Lyr yeah. Lyrically, he really him. But I still jam Drake in the car. He just um, yeah, I feel you. I'm the same you know. way. Yeah. Now when you look at life, because you got the car, you got the nice house, you got the family now. What is next? Wh what are you trying to do? Man, I think I spend every day just trying to be great. Are you just playing Monopoly at this point? You just playing play Monopoly at this point. That's that's truly what it is. Because there's levels of money, right? Like back in 2017, I was broke. So I was mm. just kind of like the struggle. That's like when you worry about how much everything costs. You're like, fuck, can I afford this? Then I remember I w one time I bought like a steak. It was like 80 bucks. And I was tripping. I was like, fuck, I can't believe I <laughs> spent 80 bucks on a steak. Fuck. Right? And then 2019, that's when I had started making like really good money. I wasn't really caring about prices and stuff, but I didn't really have real money. Like a, a, if a, like a 
There's a, there's a saying, it's like, uh, a Chrysler looks like a Bentley, or a Chrysler looks until, like a Rolls Royce until a Rolls Royce until walks in the room. Yeah. Or is it a Bentley? A Chrysler looks like a Bentley until a, a Bentley roll, walks into the room or something rolls in. So like, that's literally how it was. Like 2019, I had money, but it's only when you're comparing it to like all these other people that like didn't have money, you know? Cause real motherfuckers that have bread, when they would see me, they're like, oh, this is like a dumb kid. He, he might've made a million dollars, but like he's, are you almost at fuck you money or are you at fuck you money right now? I don't know about fuck you money, but right now, like five years later, right, 2024, I'm one of those guys that can look at these kids and be like, hey, yo, this kid thinks he made money, just wait, he's not there yet. Damn. He's okay. not there yet, because like, I thought my shit was, was hot, like my little tiny place. Mm. This place is fucking gigantic. No, this place shit's on that place. That's, That's why I shit on that place a lot now, because I'm like, damn, bro, this is. Yeah, so like my other place was dope for the regular person. For the regular. But for the rich person, this is dope. Mm. Like, all my neighbors here, like, are fucking, like, have done hundreds of millions of dollars. So, the goal for me, because I haven't done that, but the goal for me now, I guess, is just honestly just keep stacking, playing Monopoly. I want to get to the point where it's like, I have, like, fuck you money. Yeah. To, like, and fuck you money, for me, it's got to be at least, like, 100 M's. <sighs> Somebody says, I have 100 M's today. He wants to get all your businesses. You done? You out of the game? I'm not out of the game. I'm still playing the game, but I might take a year off. Travel with the family. Yeah. You know, but like, uh, like 100 M's is kind of like the goal. Um, I also want to get in better shape because I, I was in great shape. 2019, one thing I say, I was in great shape. And then as fatherhood, like I'm still in good shape. Like I still could like, trust me, like I can make it work with the right lighting. <laughs> you know? This light's crazy. Yeah, with the right lighting, shit, <laughs> I could look buff, but like, I'm not gonna lie, I don't feel as good as I did mm. when I was younger. It could just be I'm getting older. But yeah, so I want to get in better shape. I want to get uh 100 m's like my goal is to be like i envision my life like i'm this fucking like dilf you know my daughter's in school i'm like 40 couple gray hairs in my i get a fuller beard i'm like just jacked worth 100 m's i don't think your beard can get and, like mine bro. i know bro it can't this is covid beard though god gave me a weakness bro this he knew i'd be too powerful if my beard connected <laughs> he'd um, be too powerful if i was tall so <laughs> i mean so yeah so literally like my goal is to just be a dilf like walk up, pick up my daughter from school. Like, right, when she's in high school, I'll be like 40. Pick her up from school and all of her friends are like, oh my God, your dad. Damn, 40 so far, but close. It is. I mean, bro, like I said, I met you, I was like 24, 25, and now I'm fucking 28, 29. Damn. Like, I'm about to be 30. That's crazy to think, like, I'm about to be 30 is crazy. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, obviously, crazy. I've seen, I've witnessed you, and I've seen the change, and I could feel the change now in you as a person. Can you say the same about me? Yeah, man. I think we haven't talked long enough, but I could tell you're older now. Because before it was very, like, you were just young. Like, yeah. I could tell that you were older now and you're, like, trying to build your own direction. Because hmm. before, like, I think the main thing was, like, let me just get it how I can. Yeah. I'm going to do whatever I can to make money. Now you're choosing a little bit of a harder path, which is fucking... I'll tell you from, from experience, building this shit is not easy. It's not easy, bro. I did it. It's not easy. Um, but it's the right decision in the long term. Because this is the longevity that we're talking about. Yeah. Because, yeah, you can make some money, you can get hot doing it the easy way. But if you do it the hard way like this, building a personal brand, that's how you stick around forever. And that's the thing, though. I try to do it the easy way. Yeah. I, I built the resume. It's not just you, bro. It's everybody. I, I got to the point where I'm shooting who I'm shooting. Look at yeah. my Instagram. You can see it. Um, and then when I got to that point, I was like, what's next? Yeah. And I think that's why now the transition is long term. Um, for me though, perspective wise, like, do, do you see yourself as far as like your mindset, do you have to sort of be cr kind of crazy? To do this stuff? That's crazy. There's some lightning. Whoa. Or thunder. I don't know. Do you have to have some sort of, I'm going all in mentality? I think, I think everyone that wins does. Do you have to risk a lot of things? You have to risk it all, bro. Hmm. This is the way I looked at it from a very young age, though. I was like, okay, I could play it safe, but then be one of these fucking people. Like, if you look out on the balcony, I do this a lot. I look out onto the balcony, I see all these cars. I'm like, these people are going to fucking jobs. They're going to fucking, the rest of their life, that's all they're doing. And it's like, I'm not shitting on a job. I just know it couldn't be me. And we talked about it yesterday night just for a little bit when we were, like, hanging out. But I think for me, like, I'm just, I want, I'm a conqueror. I want to just fucking... Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan, that shit, bro. I got that Genghis Khan blood. So, like, I'm a conqueror. I want to fucking 
conquer things, mm. right? And it doesn't even have to be in a violent way, <laughs> but it, it's like, I wanna conquer things like in general, I wanna conquer life. So I'm crazy in the sense that I wanna just, I'm kind of psychopath where I wanna conquer things, yeah. you know? I think everybody has to have a little bit of that to be able to, to chase something like this. Cause this is the hardest way to do it. People look at my life and they're like, yo, your life is easy. I'm like, my life is fucking hard. I have a fucking six figure payroll, bro. Every single month I'm paying people hundreds of thousands, like first of the month, hundreds of thousands of dollars leave my account. Does it hurt? No, cause I got a lot of money, but like it leaves my account. Hundreds of thousands of dollars leave my account to pay people, a lot of money. But it feel like, in a way, it feels good. But people be like, oh, your life is so easy. I'm like, oh, yeah, wait till you have six figures. You scared to invest 500 bucks? Wait till you see six figures leave your account. Like, uh, I don't know. I just, when it comes to that, though, like, is there a point where you ever feel now that you could lose it all? Or you're like, nah, I'm good. You can't lose it all if you got skills. Hmm. No matter, like, would you, like, you'd be like, oh, let's say you build something, right? And I don't know, your channel gets deleted, your platform gets deleted, but you built that shit on your own anyways. Nobody just handed it to you. The reason lottery winners go broke, like if you look it up, lottery winners, when someone wins the lottery, they're likely to go broke, is because they didn't make that shit. Someone just handed it to them. Bro, God be giving people the The same, The same shit like what you would like, uh, like people with rich parents. When they hand yeah. them shit, that shit just goes away, right? The motherfuckers that built it, Donald Trump is a billionaire. He filed bankruptcy like four or five times. He's a billionaire still, because he built that shit himself. Yeah. So when you build it yourself and you know how to build it, you're not really afraid. Like, I don't live with fear, because I could lose everything tomorrow. I'll be back here fucking in six months. Hmm. So. Is that a mentality thing? It's not even a mentality thing. I'm just fucking. You just know it. I'm just, I'm, well, it is a mentality thing, but like, I just have skills, bro. I, I'm yeah. good at advertising. I'm good at social media. Mm. I'm good at what I do. I'm good at psychology. I'm good at people. I'm good at sales. Like, I have skills that make me valuable to the world. So you put me anywhere, you drop me off anywhere in the United States, I'll come back rich again. Yeah. Like it's not I, like I and people be like, oh, like you're you're like being cocky. I'm not though, because I've done it. Mm. I built multiple businesses in different verticals that make millions of dollars. With or without school? No school, no college. I don't got no college degree. I'm a college dropout. Same. Yeah. So, like I said, bro, people. People do everything they can to discredit you, but I think if, if you if you know what you are capable of, you know what you're worth, you know what skills you have, like you can do anything you want. It's but true. that's kind of like the thing though, a lot of these things that are cliche and said, when you really understand what they mean, it kind of propels you to do something, like never give up, cheesy. Cheesy as fuck, but true. you kind of need it though. I mean, just because something is cheesy doesn't mean it's not true. Believe in yourself, cheesy. Cheesy as fuck, still true. Mm. All that, all this shit, bro. It's like know your worth, right? I think people misunderstand that, cause they think like know my worth is they set their own worth. Now nah, the world sets your worth. It sounds really fucked up, but this is what I mean by that. Like, I know my worth. I, people are willing to pay me thousands of dollars to help them with their business. People are willing to to pay me for my help. People are willing to pay me for my advice. Uh, businesses are willing to pay me to help with their social media. So I know my worth to the world. Mm-hmm. I'm worth a lot of money to the world, right? That being said, I can't sit around and be like, I'm worth this much when you're not. Like these people that like have, have no skills, no experience, no degrees, no nothing, you can be like, I'm worth a lot. Yeah, maybe in your head, maybe like, like your self-esteem, you're worth a lot. <laughs> but like money, you're not worth a lot of money. There's two different things. Like you're, you're worth it as a human being. Like you might be a great person, <laughs> great, sure. But money, you gotta know you're worth also. And those people don't really last mean. though. Those people don't. What do you have to say to somebody who's like, I'm gonna do it my way, fuck what everybody else thinks, but like, they don't know what their game plan is. What do you say? That's not, what that's not bad, bro. I didn't, I didn't have a game plan either. When I first started this shit, I didn't really have a game plan, but I knew that I was willing to learn, I was willing to work. It's like mm -hmm. the, the main two things, like you gotta be willing to learn, you gotta be willing to work, and like actually work. So when I was starting the business, and even when I had the business already, I was already rich. We were in my penthouse here in my, Miami, the other one I had. Mm -hmm. I remember one time we stayed up to like 4 a.m. working on a commercial. For what, it was like 4.30, and I was like, for, for what, bro? I, I'm already rich, I don't need this shit, but like the reason I did it is because I had to deliver on something, yeah. you know? So. Um, I remember those days. You gotta be willing to like go through the shit 
Because most people, they, they don't want to they don't want to go through this shit. They want to just, like, have it easy. Yeah. Because this is fun. I'm not going to lie. This is great. But, but like, this is fun. But people don't realize, too. Like, cause same, college dropout. Yeah. But, like, doing your own thing is still hard. It's harder. It's harder. Because you're doing this for free. You're not getting paid to do this. Exactly. So, Facts. I think just, like, a lot of people nowadays, they just, I want to be an influencer. But what does that mean? Like, yeah. you still got to learn to trade. Right? Yeah. You still gotta go on YouTube University. Uh, I think I think that's kind of the issue though. A lot of people that become influencers, they don't really learn to trade. Hmm. And that's why they're they're like, you could be an influencer and broke. There's that, a lot of those. There's a lot of those. <laughs> there's a lot of them. We saw you one could yesterday. Do <laughs> yeah, so it's like like you gotta understand how the money works too. It's not just learning a trade, but it's understanding how like the money works behind the trade. Yeah. Cause a lot of influencers, they're getting hoed, bro. The businesses are just cutting them checks. They're getting pimped out. They're getting pimped out, yeah. Hey, here, here's a thousand bucks. Post for us. That's how I felt though, as a photographer. That's crazy. I remember I did a I did a deal like that. Like the brand paid me money. I was like, fuck it, twenty five hundred bucks to to post something. And I remember I was dreading it. I was like, man, fuck the money. I don't want the money. Like from now on, literally, they could offer me like brands would come to me like, yo, five grand to do this. I'm like, nah, fuck that. Damn. I will I will say no to no to any brand deals. Cause here's the thing, if I'm doing it for you, you're making more money off of it. Why would you pay me if you're not gonna make money off of it? So there's always a catch? There's always a catch. Like, think about it. If you're an influencer, why would a brand pay you if they're not going to make money off of it? <laughs> it's true. Let's say someone gives you a thousand bucks for a post. They probably made two or three grand off of that. So what? They just, they made money. They didn't do shit. They didn't do no work. They just yeah. gave you money. You did all the work and they made more than you did. Ouch. That's how it works with everything too, though. It's not just influencers. That's like, it's social media. It's influencers, yeah. right? But like, Look at uh, artists. Labels will give you money. Label like a label will give you like, yo, here's a million dollar advance. You do all the work. Your album does four million dollars. They get half of that shit. What do they call those? Three sixty deals. Well, three sixty deals when they own like the the they publishing, the, the tour. Yeah, they own everything. <laughs> um, uh, so it just depends on your record label deal. But like, all like record labels like they do the same shit. They give you money, so mm -hmm. you could do all the work. Record labels don't do any of the work with the music. I have like a music myself because I, I was bored during the pandemic. Spotify, what is it? Like, what it's is just Lakai, it's <laughs> my last name. But like, literally, bro, I was bored during the pandemic. I was like, fuck, let me rap. Fuck it. I was like doing side quests. <laughs> fuck. And like, dog, it, it's not that hard. People will be tripping. They're like, oh, man, listen, I want to be a rapper. I just, I, I don't got the studio. I don't know what to do. I'm like, bro. <laughs> I had one of my boys come over with his laptop, a mic. I got some beats off the internet. Made the cover art. He made the cover, made make the cover art, and then dead ass, like, click three buttons, upload it to the internet. Boom. That shit got, like, 100,000 streams to my music. That song was literally... That's so funny, bro. In my head. Nah, but, like, but so that's the craziest part. It's, like, when, when you, when uh, someone wants to give you money for something, mm. it's probably because they're going to make money. They're not just doing it for free. Yeah. Whether it's a label, whether it's a business paying you to post for them, like... The, all these people are doing is just taking advantage of your skill or your craft. Mm, so somebody is always taking advantage of somebody. Yeah. Are you the hoe? Are you getting hoed? <laughs> are you the hoer? <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Damn. And obviously, sometimes there's mutual benefit. Because, like, let's say you're an influencer and you kind of know what's up. You don't really, like, you're like, man, I don't want to start a business. I'd rather just post for businesses. I'm not trying to start no business myself. Mm. Then it's like, you gotta accept it. Like, they're probably making three grand off of this, but fuck it, I don't wanna deal with a headache, let me just post. But does somebody, I guess, does everybody have to go through that phase, though? Of what? Because if somebody's just starting out and they're popping, do they kinda have to, like, okay, one of those, like, for comparison. You're trying to get into the game, you don't have a, bit, a big enough resume, you kinda gotta do gigs for free. Yeah. Is that sort of like what you gotta do, though? Yeah, for sure. Everybody has to go through that. You right? gotta earn your keep. So you got it. Uh, and at take. some point, the work speaks for itself, though. So, like, my, my main thing, right? Like, when you're doing your own brand, like, it's your own shit. You're not trying to get no gigs. It's your own shit. The numbers speak for themselves. Like, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Mm. Someone could tell me my shit's trash, but if I go on the internet, post it, it gets a million views. <laughs> What's up, you know? So that's really what it is. So like, the way I look at it, like, these days, you don't even, nobody knows. People could say that they're experts. I could say I'm an expert. You don't gotta listen to the shit I gotta say because yeah. at the end of the day, like the numbers will never lie. You know? Mm. The, what, one thing I've been like saying, it's kind of fucked up and I'm petty for it, but like anytime someone tries to, to hate, I just be like, scoreboard. 
Check the scoreboard, bro. It's like 103. That's a good model. I'm blowing you out right now. I ain't that shit. Scoreboard. Scoreboard. <laughs> scoreboard. It's true. It's like, yo, you talking all this shit. You got three points on the board. I'm, I'm fucking oh, up 120. You scoreboard, but you been hooping? You still be hooping or not? Yeah, not as no, much. I need bro. to, bro. I need a, I need a hoop. You have a whole fucking thing out there. Yeah, I need a hoop more, bro. I need a hoop. Yeah, I've been boxing. I've been boxing a lot. Oh, yeah. So what does yeah. day in the life look like? Shit, wake up. Wake and bake. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's the shit they be saying on podcasts. They be like, shit, wake up. Wake and bake. Wake and bake. Nah, I, uh, nah, I wake up. Go to the gym. Are there any? Take some calls. Take some texts. What keeps you sane? Keeps me sane? Mm-hmm. When there's a lot of, because you're at a point now where I figure there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. What keeps you right? I love the little wins, bro. It don't matter what it is. I love the little wins. And I love, like, building shit. As long as I'm building shit, I'm happy. I realized that, too, because for a while, I was, like, 2021, 2022, I took a little bit of, like, time off because I just wanted to party and, like, fuck around, you know? So I realized, like, I thought that was going to make me more sane, just, like, being able to take a break. Yeah. That shit is actually worse for me. Like, I like building shit. Mm. I like growing. I like, like, conquering. Like I said, I like that shit because it keeps me sane because I look at it, I'm kind of like, this is, like, what I'm meant to do. Yeah. Like everybody has like their purpose, like God's purpose for them, and like that is kind of my my shit. When I'm able to like conquer, take over something, or like get some form of success. I was telling my wife like I'm a dopamine addict, right? And a lot of people are, but they'll do it through like cheap ways, like video games or drugs mm-hmm. or like fucking partying. Like that's cheap dopamine, and you're not doing anything constructive there. For me, I love dopamine. I'm the same way. I, I suffer from the same fucking affliction as everybody else. Except the difference is, I get my dopamine from like, oh, we made 10 grand today. That's my dopamine hit, mm. right? Someone might be like, yo, I scored 10,000 points on Fortnite. I don't know how Fortnite works, but like, yo, I got, I got 10,000 on Fortnite. Close points. enough. Yeah. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> I kill, I kill, t- <laughs> I kill 10,000 people on Fortnite. Like, I feel good. For me, it's like, yo, I made $10,000. I feel good. Because, yeah. again, scoreboard. People could be like, yo, it's not all, life's not all about money. It's like, what is it about then? <laughs> It's true, because this is a fact. People, I hate when people say this, like, oh, money can't buy you happiness, money can't buy you this. You know rich people live longer? Why? Because they eat better, they have better food. Like, I, I have a chef that comes in and cooks for me. Golly. I have three gym memberships. Mm. I, can, I have a trainer. So money allows you to do this stuff, and obviously it's easier to stay healthy when you got that. Like, can you stay healthy when you're broke? Yeah, but you're also fucking eating less, like, lower quality food. You have less, like, nice gym equipment. So you could do it, it's just harder. Hmm. Like, when you have money, it's like a cheat code. It makes, the, it makes life way easier because now I have access to everything that makes me live longer. And if I get sick, I go to the best hospital with the best doctor. They keep me alive. Versus people that, like, go to the free hospitals with the free doctors. Like, I don't know how that works, actually, so I don't, shouldn't even be speaking on that. But, like, if you look it up, it's a real statistic. Rich people live nine times longer. Damn, I didn't even think of that. They live li- nine times longer. I want a chef. How's that life? Yeah. She's cool. Mm-hmm. She, uh, yeah, she's cool. I don't really be eating too much, like, she don't be going hard like that. I'm like, listen, I just want steak, eggs, rice. Every day, steak, eggs, rice, that's it. No that's vegan? Not going nah, <laughs> nah. You like that meat? Pause. Pride month. Uh, <laughs> Pride, Pride month. month. <laughs> Pride month. Nah, 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 nah. Duh. Damn. Here's my thing. When I was in L.A., I don't know why, for some reason, I, I was like, all right, let me do it. That shit sucked, bro. I don't know. Not even pescatarian? I mean, it's Fish? easier, but like, nah, bro, I need, I need fucking... Say it. I need fucking... <laughs> Say it. Carne. Nah. I, I need fucking steaks. Need that meat. Yeah. Because vegan is cool. But then I thought about it, because like, I understand some people do it like, yo, don't hurt the animals. I care about the animals. I'm like, yo, these animals are literally getting born to get eaten, so... It's kind of sad. I know, it is really sad, but like, fuck. If, if I don't eat them, somebody else is going to eat them. Somebody else is going to eat them. So like, what the fuck am I doing? Like... Listen, no, here's my thing. If everyone on planet Earth was like, you know what? Let's go vegan, I'll do it. I'll, I'll be for the cause. If everybody agrees, but if that fucker's gonna have a steak, I'm gonna have one too, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Got me fucked all the way up. So what, he gets to enjoy it? Oh, I'm shit. over here eating grass? Nah. Fuck. All right, let me give you three scenarios. Go ahead. Answer off rip. <laughs> be broke or stay rich and lonely? Nah, I'd be broke and have some people. The point of making money in the first place, honestly, is just to be able to have more options. Because, like, money by itself, I think people, like, this is what they don't understand about money. 
They think money is, like, is the ultimate goal. It's not. Money just makes every part of your life better. So a great example, my love life got 10 times better with money. It got 10 times better with money. Explain. Every girl wants a fucking baller. That's like how it mm. is. Because think about it, if you're a girl. Is that a life hack? Is that a cheat code? That's a cheat code. Having money? It's not, not the only thing, because if you're shitty, there's a lot of rich dudes that are fucking dorks that I, like yeah. women still don't like. It's not like the end of the world, you know? It's like, it has to be like money mixed with your personality. Mm. Like if you're a G and you make money, and you're a G with money, bruh, cheat code. So what do you think about Tate? I like Tate. G with money? He's a G with money. Top G? Top G. <laughs> Top no, but like, so think about it, right? Like, no girl, like, guys are, I hate when guys be like, yo, like, oh, a, a girl shouldn't care about money. Which girl, if, if you're a girl and you get to pick two situations, oh, I get to, um, I'm taken care of, everything I want, I got, I got a roof on my head, I get to live in this big ass penthouse, I get to travel whenever I want. Uh, if I have kids with this guy, I'm, everything's gonna be good. My life is gonna be easy. Or I'm gonna date this guy and like, fuck, we're gonna have to split bills, I have to go to work. I don't know if rent's gonna be paid. I don't know if my baby's gonna starve. I'm gonna be pregnant for nine months and fucking I still have to worry about the money. Like, what girl would choose this? Instead of the girl that's like, oh, okay, hop on the jet, go somewhere, boom, done. You know? Perspective. Damn. It's like no girls in their right mind is gonna choose that. It's like yeah. it's like a, a it's, imagine you're a dude, and like this girl's hot, this girl's ugly. Which one are you choosing? It's the same exact shit, bro. Cause if a guy's like arguing, like nah, a girl shouldn't care about money. She should care about your personality. I'm like, alright, you shouldn't care about how a girl looks. Then you should just care about her personality. <laughs> like how come if you're, if you're a dude, go date like the the ugly girl with the personality. Mm. Since since that's what since that what people should care about personality go date the ugly or the fat girl with personality. <laughs> why is everybody why is it like why is everybody want these like Instagram model looking girls? Yeah. They don't want like the the fat girl with the with the with oh. the personality. If that's what you should care about personality, you know. Mm. It's fucked up, but it's true. They girls too, right? <laughs> they need. It's love. like yeah, they need love. <laughs> that's the same. Broke guys need love too. I'm sure they do, yeah. but like I'm not gonna be the one to fucking do it. Real quick, if you were to put your course into a couple sentences right now. To somebody who's just starving, bro, tired of their life, man. depressed, lonely ass kid, man, man or girl, woman, what do you say to them? All right, so if someone's just lonely, depressed, man or woman, they just want to change their life, here's my main thing. You got to make yourself valuable somehow to the world, whether that's through like social media, whether that's through learning a skill like sales, whether it's like going to college or something, whether it's learning a skill like videography, content creation. Um, make yourself valuable to the world somehow. Make yourself valuable to the world somehow. Get really fucking good at your craft. Because otherwise, you're not going to be able to make any money. Most of the time, if you're a guy, your loneliness is typically because you have money. Or because you don't have money. Because once you have money, everyone wants to hang out with you. And then that's where the second problem comes in, where you have to like, choose your friends correctly, right? But if it, were up, if it were up to me, learn a skill, get really good at it, use it to make money, right? And a skill could be anything. Like, people, I, I hate people because they're like, well, that doesn't mean anything. What's a skill? I'm like, I'll tell you right now. Social media, marketing, sales, videography, video editing. Like, these are all skills that are monetizable. There's people out there that are making a bunch of money with these skills, you know? Uh, Those are smart kids. Those are smart kids, yeah. Younger than 20. Exactly. Doing. Just crushing it. So learn these skills. Like, it doesn't have to be all of them. Learn one of them. Get yeah. really good at it. Use it to make money. And then use the money to then fix the other problems outside of your life. Because mm. if you're lonely, let's say you're a guy, you're lonely, right? I guarantee you, you start making some money, it'll put you in some circles with other guys that are just as equally as ambitious. Now you got boys, right? And if you're a guy with money, women are gonna start paying more attention to you. I don't wanna make this too long, but I do wanna touch on this part. Yeah. Is manifesting real? And was it real for you? Uh, Law yes. of attraction, all that, do you believe in that? 100%, bro. We talk about this all the time. Like, I, uh, I got tweets to this day. Back when I was like, fucking, 18 years old, um, hold on, let me see if I can find them. When I was like 18 years old, I would tweet some bullshit. I would tweet some like fucking like, I'm gonna get this car, and it was like the BMW that I ended up getting. Mm. I was working at, I was washing dishes at, a, at like a fast food restaurant. So like, I was washing dishes at a fast food restaurant, and I was tweeting shit like that, and people like would look at it and be like, you, this guy is a fucking idiot. Like, <laughs> this guy's gonna, this guy's like not going anywhere with his life. Sure enough, I got that car. I said some shit about like, yo, I'm gonna be on, on Forbes. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, I ended up on Forbes. There was a, another one where uh, I posted like, crazy, I toured this crib like two years ago. 
Oh, shit. They were building it. They weren't done with it yet. They were still building it. And I was like, that's what I want. And then at the time, like, this is like, it was like 20, it was listed for like twenty four, twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 a month. So at the time, I was kind of like, that's still a reach. But I toured it, liked it. I was like, all right, bet. Lease was uh, ending over there. We're having a baby, so we need to get a bigger place. I was looking at some houses. Um, I was showing you some of those, but I was kind of like, man. Then I, I, I don't get a view of the water no more. I'm not on the water. I'm kind of like more in. Mm. Like, I mean, like the burbs. I was kind of like, the, mm, the, the boondocks. <laughs> the boondocks. No, it wasn't the boondocks. It was a nice area, but yeah. like, I'm just like out of like Miami, right? Like where I do all my business. And Sure enough, I was like, fuck it, let me just look at what this is. And then I see it, I was like, nah, we're, we're doing this, fuck it, and I made it happen. So, bro, like, I'm big on manifesting because I think if you genuinely have it in your mind, like, that's what you're gonna do and you set your mind to it, and, like, you do all the work it takes to get there, mm -hmm. you, don't know, you don't have to know how you're gonna get there, but let's say, oh, I want this, I want this right here, a picture of a fucking Lambo on your wall. I want that. And you just work hard every single day. And you grind every single day. It's gonna find, you're gonna find an opportunity where it comes to you. Like, you'll be like, yo, like one of, one of your boys one day, let's say you, you're doing photography and you're making a lot of money doing photography. You go to like some dude's house, it's like a dude like me, and like, yo, man, I'm selling my Lambo actually. I, I, want, I want to do a deal on it for anyone. And you're taking pictures, you're like, yo, man, I've been saving some money, I, I'm interested. And sure enough, I give you a deal and you're like, yo, that's perfect. You manifested that Lambo. You know, it happens all the time. For the longest time, you wanna see the, the right now my background is this. It says, it says you're not worth 100 million yet back to work, but mm. for, uh, for the longest time, my background was, um, how do you do that shit where you change your... And I only ask about the manifestation because I'm a firm believer in it. No, I think I'm, that's I'm what got me way, out to bro. LA in the first place. Um, I'm the same way, bro. I'm trying to figure out, like, there's a way to, I don't know how you do it. There's a way to, like, look at the backgrounds you have. Oh, hold it. Hold it? This? Yeah, uh, wait, uh, lock it first. Lock it. And then hold it. There you go. Oh, shit. All right. I'm kind of pissed. I wanted to flex the Jays. I'm going to go bring out show them real quick. Yeah, go for it, bro. I'm going to show them the fit. OOTD. You can't not tell me this is not a fly fit, bro. For what, bro? I'm not even going to put it on, but like, come on. This fucking guy. <laughs> you know, that's one thing I've, I, I've that you stuck with. And I... I it's the black tea. I dead ass don't. For what? Why do I need to look good for? I, I think, mm -hmm. like, this is my main thing. People be trying to, like, dress and do all this. I'm like, I don't need to do none of that. Mm -hmm. my, my goal is to take care of my family, make some money, conquer mm -hmm. the world. Fuck it. Who cares if I'm in a black t-shirt? What? Like, why are you, why, as a man, why are you dressed, why are you wearing fucking outfits for? Mm -hmm. I get mad at my brother for that. No, it's not just <laughs> you, but I get mad at my brother for that, too. I'm like, bro, you're fucking broke. Why are you fucking mm -hmm. worried about, like, what the freshest fit is? 100%. I'm very much so on the, what? the cream tea and the black tea. Yeah. But I'm not too so, crazy on everything else, though. So, like, I don't know. So, I see that. I'm kind of like, bro, you, you got your priorities fucked. <laughs> like, your priorities are fucked up. Like, you, you're you worried about a fucking, what t-shirt you're going to wear to impress your friends when you have no fucking, like, money? Mm. Come on. Now, if you're a fashion designer, I get it. All right. So, this is my background for a minute. Um, if you're a fashion designer, like, that's your, your thing, obviously, if the if the... the thing you're worried about corresponds to your life. I get it, but at but the same kinda, time... It kind of has to... I mean, I don't have a fresh fit. My background for the longest time was that. Mm. And then sure enough, that's the whip I got too. So it's like, mm. I, I always like... In, in my head, I always put like what I want in immediate sight. So then I'm just programming my brain to like, okay, every day like this. So you're not worth 100 million yet. Because when I'm worth 100 million, I change this to the next one too. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to change it again. So, like, whatever I, I, I want to, like, think about every day and remind myself, I'll just make it something. And I'll go fucking get that real quick. And that's manifesting. It's ma in my head. And the, the universe meets you halfway, bro. Like, the, the yeah. beautiful thing about life is that the universe will meet you halfway to all of your goals. If you set a goal out there and, like, you deserve it and you fucking grinding and the world sees you grinding, you're going to get that shit. That's just how it works. And see, a lot of people will listen to that and be like, oh, I don't want to... Work hard every day, cliche, right? They want the universe to just give it to them. That's not how it works. Like you gotta, you gotta work hard. Every you gotta do day. baby steps. Exactly. You, but it only works when you do baby steps. Facts. So I don't know, but it looks like it's about to rain. Yeah. I want to get this photo shoot in. Um, so, if there's anything else you want to say? What you nah, got man. going on? Want to keep um, everything? It's cool too. 
I got, so you guys can find me at Renee Lacad on all socials. Of course, I got, only $29.99. I got, I got the blue check on all of them. I'm not going to plug the course because people be hating on the course for no reason. But I got my supplement company on Limiter. I got my software company, SMM Deal Finder. Mm. And I got my socials at Renee Lacad. So you can uh, follow all that. Yeah, man. Appreciate you, brother. This is it. I wanted to say one last thing. For this to happen, I just want to also to prove that I know motherfuckers too. All right? <laughs> like, I'm tired of y'all not seeing me do shit. So you gotta flex, flex, you gotta flex the crib on This is on my them, flex. I think this is why I like doing this so much because this is my flex. I know a lot of people. I know too many people. I know a lot of people that do shit, and yeah. I'm in these same rooms. And I think this is me sort of saying like, I'm not just a shooter. Yeah. I know these motherfuckers. Yeah, man. And uh, this is going to continue happening. This episode has been Renee in Miami. And uh, we're going to go see what else Miami we're gonna get you. This is going to be the biggest episode ever. Think so? I mean, I don't know. I post someone else's shit first. I want to see how many views they get so I can beat it. Well, I want to do a rollout, so let's see yeah. what we can get. <laughs>